Good morning, good evening. It's Sunday the 23rd of August. Right, I have been trying to figure out where the US dollar is going over the past couple of weeks, uh, more so than ever. Um, I had looked for a dollar in the bottom index and anyway, it looks like we're getting it. Trying to figure out why we bounced where we bounced from and the only thing I can get is from the dollar index is on the monthly chart. We've got the 100 month moving average in at around 91.70 as you can see. We got down as far as 92.12. That's pretty close. Um, if people have got buy orders in because they think that the, the 100 month moving average is going to hold, you can't, uh, margin of error of around 40 pips is nothing uh, on a monthly chart. Now, if we look at the weekly chart, there's no reason why we would have bounced, but we've certainly got a very positive looking candle now from last week. Uh, we had a relatively positive candle here, which is where I thought we double bottomed, and I was then surprised to see us break lower. Uh, that fooled me, but anyway. Uh, two days ago, I think it was Wednesday, I was talking about um, potential bottom and we did rally into the end of the week and we did form this positive candle here. So, what's that hammer, isn't it? Uh, no particular support levels on the weekly chart to indicate why we bottomed. So I am going to take it that the, the 100 month moving average was the reason that we held have found support. We are clearly oversold with the slow stochastic on the weekly chart as well. So this is all looking I have to take this as bullish for the US dollar. Um, just to finish off on the US dollar index, on the daily chart, very oversold again. So, well, not very oversold, but we are starting to turn positive on the stochastics, I have to say. There is some divergence there, notice. We, we had a new low um, last week, but uh, on the, with the stochastic that was diverging because this was not as low as the low uh, at the end of July, beginning of August. So we have got positive divergence. It's not a big deal, but worth noting. Now. I wonder if we'll, this will turn into an inverse head and shoulders pattern. It could do. It'll be. It'll frustrate me if it does, because it means we'll trade sideways for longer. And I'm hoping that we rally because I'm long the dollar now. But um, we'll have to see what happens. If we peak here at around 93.90 and then reverse, maybe we'll then reverse and have a have a shallower dip, and that will form an inverse head and shoulders, and then bang, we'll go. But of course, I'm just guessing. Uh, right now, we've got two decent. That's not quite an, a bullish engulfing candle because the low was not quite as low um, as it was in the 18th, but still a very bullish candle, big blue body. This is a, definitely a bullish engulfing candle. So you can see what I'm showing you is that there are some quite bullish signs. Uh, I can tell you on the hourly chart, we're now trading above the 100 and the 200 hour moving average, which is also uh, bullish in the short term. Aussie dollar probably was trade of the week last week when we sold it up here. Uh, and the shorts looking good. Bearish engulfing candle. Uh, I think that we can look for some further losses in the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar, uh, especially based on what I'm seeing in the dollar index. Uh, maybe you're still short, if not selling to rallies at the moment. Um, very nice reaction here at the 200 week moving average. This was my strong resistance level. Working well, the weekly candle, as you can see, is quite negative. The spike up, the almost, um, unchanged close. So yeah, again, I favor moves to the downside in the Aussie dollar. You can see we're overbought in the stochastic on the weekly chart. The New Zealand dollar isn't really telling me very much, nor is the dollar yen. So I'm just going to leave them. I'm just going to have a quick look at the monthly chart for the euro. Uh, okay, so we spiked above the 100 month moving average, in fact, when we didn't quite reach it on the dollar index. So a uh, bit of confusion there. But you can see the 61.8 at 118.22. We spiked well above it, but we closed below it on um, at the moment on the weekly basis, that's the monthly chart. We'll look at the weekly chart. Um, so the weekly candle is very negative, the spike up, the lower close. So the shooting star, uh, coupled with some less than positive candles here, I would say. So look, I think the picture is, you know, you can see what I'm saying here. Um, a stronger dollar probably now, um, as you can see, overbought in the weekly stochastic. I don't think there's going to be anything particularly interesting on the daily chart. But we'll just have a quick look. Yeah, uh, again, it's a sort of mirror image of the dollar index. Potentially, we might form an, an, a head and shoulders pattern and then collapse. We'll have to just watch that, I'm guessing. But for now, I do favor the downside for the euro versus the US dollar. This is one I've got my hopes on. Not quite the bullish engulfing candle. What do you call that? Um, forget the name of the pattern. You know me. I forget all the patterns, but I know what they mean. That's quite a bullish um, candle. I would have. I was hoping for a more positive reaction over the last two days, but didn't get it. But anyway, we're trading sideways. The stochastics are just starting to turn positive from a pretty seriously severely oversold position on the weekly chart. 
I really like the fact that we're holding the 61.8% Fib. This was my buy level, which admittedly we overran further than I expected, but not, you know, when you look at it on the weekly chart, it's just a tiny blip, it's nothing. So the 31.70 level holding just about on the weekly close level, which is good. 200 hour uh, week moving average is, is holding as well. So really good support around 31.70, even though we dipped just below that. Uh, slightly oversold on the weekly chart as well. I'm long this, I'm long this over the weekend, so I'm really hoping for some um, so a real good bounce back in the US dollar in this pair in particular. Uh, gold's been good to us most of this year. We've been riding the bull wave. We've um, monitored the consolidation patterns and then bought into breaks higher. Now this is looking like something a little bit more serious than we've seen before. I'm not saying that this is a negative pattern and that market's going to collapse, but I certainly do think that it's uh, too risky to be holding a long position now. Who knows, we could get down to this sort of 1857 area. Entirely possible there's a good trend line there and certainly a good 23.6% support. It does feel like we, we are in need of a correction. Look at the stochastics on the weekly chart there as well. Um, there's no particular sell signal. There's nothing, there's no particular negative pattern other than the fact that of course we've had some serious, uh, serious correction already and this peak is now of course lower than the previous peak. So in that respect, you could say that we're starting a short-term downtrend just because we've got one lower high, although we haven't even got a lower low yet. Uh, we'd have to break the previous low at uh, 1863 to confirm a more negative pattern or trend in the short term at least. So what I'm saying is just be careful with gold. If you've got, if you're holding longer term long positions, then you might want to lighten up a little bit. Uh, I'm sure eventually we'll break higher and, and the bull trend will resume, but right now it doesn't look like that is going to happen. So just be aware that I think the risks are to the downside. Oil's a funny one. The October contract, not easy to trade, um, I don't think. Uh, as you can see, we don't seem to be able to spend more than two days going in one direction without reversing. Uh, three, a three-day pattern here at the beginning of the month. But generally, we're just not really going anywhere. Um, getting these spikes down Recently, we had a big spike down on Thursday and a big spike down on Friday, followed by a strong recovery. So I'm not really sure how you trade that. But I think what's key here is the 200 day moving average is clearly offering resistance. Um, so 43.40 is where it stands at the moment. And we seem to be just backing away from that or just hovering below that line, in fact. So again, I think risk of to the downside in oil. I think we could be building something um, more negative. There's no, no actual pattern that I can put my finger on, not even any real candle formation, but um, I think it's just being weighed by that red 200 day moving average at the moment. US stock markets, well the Nasdaq's unstoppable, uh, new all time highs all the time. The S&P is a little bit more interesting uh, because we have got this potential double top which I've been talking about all week of course as we retest the previous all time high at 33.97. Where did we get to? 33.96.25. So we didn't manage to break the um, the previous, the, well, the all-time high made earlier this year. I mean, that could be the mother of all double top patterns, couldn't it? Um, I guess selling here is extremely low risk. You can have a stop above 3,400. Uh, very, very small stop. And if the market collapses, if this does turn out to be a double top, then obviously there's huge potential profit on a reaction to the double top pattern in overbought conditions. The only thing is, it's not matched with any negative pattern in the NASDAQ and it's not particularly matched by anything I can show you in the Dow Jones, which are the three US stock markets that I monitor. The Dow Jones actually is the one that's the weakest. It's lagging behind the other two markets because uh, if I remember correctly, we haven't even managed, no, we haven't even managed to retest the previous high there. So you can see there's quite a difference between the Dow Jones and the E-mini S&P. So Dow Jones is lagging behind, E-mini S&P retesting previous highs and the NASDAQ making new all-time highs uh, on a weekly basis, almost on a daily basis. So you quite mixed signals from US stocks. Uh, let's see if that S&P double top plays out. That would be quite messy for the bulls if that does develop. If you're watching this video a few days late, um, this is just, uh, aimed at my subscribers, but I often release them two or three days later for everyone else to view. So if you're, if you're viewing it and you're not a subscriber, please have a look at our website, daytradeideas.co.uk, see what we do. There's education. There's uh, daily trade signals, um, technical analysis reports, basically pretty much everything you could possibly need to be a successful day trader.